the number one thing would be funding. Funding is critical. Um, police has to be funded. The Judiciary, Ministry of Justice, Correctional Service. So funding is just critical. Funding, the funding has to be provided and the government needs to be uh, so committed to that. I, I have said it in passing before that this law requires capital in some respects, but in, in many respects it requires capital to execute it. Um, you said lawyers in the Ministry of Justice, they have to render legal advice within 14 days. And they have so many files. And how many lawyers do they have? Do they have enough manpower to do it? Do they have enough logistics and facilities to discharge this, to meet this responsibility. And if they are stretching themselves, forcing themselves to do it, what is the level of quality that they can bring into what they do? Is it not going to be a case of when they render legal advice even within time, eventually they wouldn't have rendered quality legal advice and the people who want to be punished will eventually go scot free. We say the court should hear criminal cases day to day. Do we have enough judges? How are they writing? What is the condition, the courtroom condition? Do we have ACs, air conditioners in our courtrooms? Do we even have regular power supply in the courtroom? Tell us. Do we have enough supporting staff? Tell us, tell us. Well, I just need to tell you, you know, you know the general state of things in the country. So, and the judiciary, the Ministry of Justice, the police, they are not accepted. The same general problem that we all face, they also face. So, it's everywhere. They have their limitations. So much is expected from all these agencies under the new law. But unfortunately, little is provided. As I speak, I'm not aware if uh, any, budget has, any budget for the implementation of this law has been made in other states. I'm not aware. I seriously doubt it. At the federal level, from the information we got, even from the ACJMC, that is Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee, there is no provision yet for budget. And this law needs budget for full and effective implementation. So, the same thing in other states, that is not the case. So everybody is struggling, it's not easy. The climate is not yet conducive for full implementation of this law. The judiciary needs to be further funded. The same thing with Ministry of Justice. Apart from getting more hands into the ministry to do the work, we also need to do a lot in terms of the logistics and logistic support for them in the ministry. Facilities, do they have computers, how do they access information in the ministry. And even the files, it's difficult. There are files, files still get missing in the ministry up to now because they don't come. They have not, they have not computerized the ministry. So all these challenges make things difficult. But to the largest thing, I must confess that this, the situation generally is better than what it used to be. I, I, I don't think you need all the money in the world to get the right things done. There was a court I was in in Benue. At that time, the ACJL hasn't been passed. The judge, uh, Justice um, Onum, he, he, an application was made for proceeding to be stayed, which is part of the provision of ADJA. He, he, dis, he, he, didn't, um, he didn't allow or he did not, like he rejected the application for stay of proceeding, even at the time that Benue had not passed, you know, the Administration of Criminal Justice Law. He didn't need money to do that. It is just, you know, it is just an attitude, it's just attitude to work, you know, patriotism and, you know, trying to, you know, to bring what you have to the table. So I don't think paucity of fun alone, or paucity of fun is the greatest challenge to act here. People are not just being willing, you know, to do the right thing. As a judge, or sorry, as, as a judge, even in the states that have not passed AJA, if you feel one of the provisions of AJA, you know, should instruct your judgment, I think you should just, <laughs> should just do the right thing. So, my advice is that uh, more resources be, uh, 
into the, the justice or criminal justice sector. Then there are the correctional center. You know that those those are the facilities that have been there over over years past. When the crime, the little the crime on the ground was just mere theft, housebreaking, and all these uh, pickpockets. But today is a different uh, different thing altogether. Uh, we should expand the uh, prison facilities, and uh, more money should be given to the police for purpose of uh, conducting uh, investigation and modern investigation equipment be made available. So that's, those are the things we are saying. And the court, the court is only in Nigeria. Here you see our courts are writing in long hands, the judges. So they will be able to have a other method of a, maybe recording device where the law, the judges only watch uh, and then take evidence electronically. It sounds very ridiculous for you know for police officers to keep uh, making these excuses because uh, most of them they have they go for birthday uh, parties they have had weddings that they made videos and posted online so if you have a digital um, if if you, if if you have a phone a smartphone that you can use for other recordings I think it is patriotic for you to devote it also to your duty because um, I feel. I feel that if we want to wait on Nigeria to provide everything we need, no job will be done. There are lawyers that make fat, that make money from fat briefs. But my network, you know, brings lawyers together to offer free legal services. It is not very cheap to train a lawyer in Nigeria. But being that as it may, we still devote our time to free legal services. So every Nigeria, like how they make the NYC compulsory, every Nigeria should find it as a point of duty, you know, to offer some services that will push or that will advance the, the course of Nigeria. So I feel that in as much as paucity of funds is one of the challenges. It is not, you know, like, how I don't know how to put it now, but it doesn't stop them from doing the right thing. That's why I feel. Yes, for me, I think everywhere you go to, they always tell you, no fund, no fund. You go to the Nigerian Correctional Facility, they say they can't do this, they can't do that because no fund. Sometimes they cannot even get the inmates to court for their trials because no fund. You go to the Nigerian police, they tell you there is no fund, they can't get cameras, they can't get system, they can't do this. You go to the um, Ministry of Justice, they tell you the same thing, they can't afford to em employ your more lawyers because they don't have fund. You go to the judiciary, they tell you there are no fund, so how can they get to the police station to go and inspect the police station? How can they do this? How can they employ more judges and magistrates? For, for me, I think the basic, the primary problem we have is um, corruption. There's corruption everywhere. They can't say there's no money. For me, I feel there's money. But the thing is that the money is not getting where, it's not getting to the people it's supposed to get to. So if we can um, curb corruption, the implementation of the ACJL will be better. What we are doing in the ACJL is to say that we want to um, sensitize all the stakeholders to ensure that we do this powerful advocacy that just what you said, that the government, executive, not just just say government, the executive, I think those are the people that I have problem with. It is irresponsible for the executive not to be paying attention or prioritizing criminal justice. And I think that is the message that we need to put out there. I don't know how we do it, but it's something that needs to be put us together to say, you must prioritize criminal justice system. And that's what they have not been doing. Not enough funding being pumped in there or otherwise monitoring the how it's been expended. You must take it seriously that, you know, from the law enforcement to the correctional service, you know, we have in the DPP in my ministry today, we have the lawyers, the prosecutors using their funds, their salary to go to court. They are not being paid. So half of the time they are justified in not going to court. They say, I don't have money. My, I still have my DTA lying down there from God knows how many years. You can imagine. And then you see the same with the police. They will tell you that, you know, DPO is saying, I am the one feeding these detainees. I am the one buying the toll, I'm the one buying. So when I ask for, they tell it openly. When I ask for money for bail, I don't feed my family with it. 
I feed these people. They are not being provided food for one day, once in a day, apart from maybe one or two few in FCT, talk place of other states. You understand? Know so what is happening? Is it not being allo- money not being allocated? And why should it be constantly that you know we see what happens in prison and all that across the country and across all other clients? What is it that criminal justice is almost secondary or even irrelevant to the executive? And this is what we should be doing. And I don't know per chance whether the advocacy through you know the question that you get a judgment. How are you going to enforce it? Several fundamental human rights enforcement are there. No one is. How do you enforce it? No one is paying the compensation they will give you today, and I it's just. People asking for compensation. I'm just saying. Just how do we? Action. If they don't what have action problem, would they take if you get the judgment? It depends on. Let's even get the judgment first. Uh, no, you so must be far foresight. If you want to reform the, we need to be that sort of forward looking in terms of how will this put us forward. That should be our focus. How do not. So much of sensation that I mean, with due respect, I'm not saying sensation now per se, but we must be hands on concrete things, must be happening. The question is, why will an attorney general not be so conscious that you know, as much as I'm into asset recovery, I must focus on building a legacy that I'm I put in a good mind when I was there. Criminal justice became a matter of priority for my government, and I can speak to the uh, president that this is. We need to do better than this. First great area would be the issue of the length of time. Uh, of course, this, the ACGA stipulates uh, a series of timelines. You have uh, day-to-day adjournment, day-to-day trials. You have uh, 14-day adjournments. You have trials for 180 days, and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, in terms of uh, the practicality of these sections, you know, there's. A conflict with reality when you look at the number of judges you have the number of prosecuting counsel that you have we have um, a very a very small number of prosecu- prosecutors in the FCT I think about 17 at the moment you know, that's very small you know, and it makes it difficult to comply with that provision you know, so the the impact really is uh, will be a negative one for the uh, for the criminal justice system of course you now have questions of whether the legality or otherwise of the trials if there's where there's no compliance with, with these timelines um, additionally I would say that there should be an increase in funding for criminal justice actors especially with regards to ensuring compliance with some of the aspects of the ACJA for example um, the aspects of the ACJ that require that uh, the recording of confessional statements um, with you know, recording devices. You know, th- there's there's a requirement by law, but there's no counterpart funding to back up that requirement. Now, what happens is organizations that don't have a, a strong budgetary framework, like Nigerian Police, for example, will fall foul of those provisions, and that will now create you know a lacuna, you know, in the criminal justice system. It raises issues of admissibility of confessional statements where. You know, every other aspect of law is complied with, but that aspect was not complied with. So, things like that, uh, the federal government and the various state governments should prioritize funding um, of the various criminal justice stakeholders, especially with a view to ensuring compliance with the ACGA.